First, the state governor releases the Boko Haram terrorist who he said are now repentant. But the same Bruno governor, Babagana Zulum, is blaming Nigerian soldiers for the Sunday night attack by Boko Haram that killed over 30 stranded travelers. And Abba Jalingo has spent 172 days in incarceration for alleged acts of terrorism and cybercrime. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Agba Jalingo has been incarcerated for over 170 days for alleged acts of terrorism and cybercrime following an article he wrote in July 2019, seeking accountability for 500 billion naira alleged to have been diverted by the Cross River State Government. In fighting for this freedom, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has dragged the government of Nigeria and Cross River State Government to echo a court of justice in Abuja over his incarceration. Reports have also reached us that he will be appearing before a new judge come Thursday. And I'm joining me live to discuss this further for in-depth analysis is Najib Bello, a political analyst. Thank you, Najib, for joining us this evening. And also political analyst, Smart Akbejoye. Thank you very much for joining us, Smart. Thank you for having me. Let's start off this way. What is your reaction to all of this development around Agba Jalingo as it stands, given the moment right now? I think uh, this kind of issue, incarcerating journalists or citizens at large anyway, is something that is seen at the federal level and any governor, even local government chairman, very soon will begin to exercise their powers to just arrest anybody they don't like and throw the person somewhere. I think uh, what uh, Mr. Jalingo was trying to do was create clarity to let the citizens know that, okay, there's a 500 million naira or thereabout belonging to the state which has been put to a so-called microfinance bank. What's happening with the money? Where exactly is the money? Where is the, what's the money doing? You know, and other stories, of course, but that is the most critical of yes. them all. So I don't see how this leads to terrorism or how it leads to cyber crime just clarifying and say we know that this money was moved here for the purpose of this but we don't know anything about that money anymore so i, I think it's very wrong what's happening with uh with mr jalen <coughs> now mr smart um amnesty international has accused the nigerian government and that of cross fever of manipulating the criminal justice system just to continue for them to continue to detain agba jalingo for his outspokenness how do you want to react to this First, it's unfortunate that I have my friend Agba Jalingo. He's been in um, incarceration for over, I think, about 172 days. It's 172 now. days, yes. And um, as a friend, there's nothing I could do to assist him. And um, it's so sad that sometimes, look, when I look at the Nigeria as a country, and I look at our constitution, and I look at those that are supposed to uphold the tenets of Nigerian constitution, sometimes I am, I, am, I am in a feast. I don't know where I belong to. Because we have a country where if you are coming in either as a local government chairman or as a governor or as, as Mr. President, you will swear to and hope that you will uphold the Nigerian constitution. And the very moment you drop that oath, you now become something else. Nigerian constitution has given right to, has given too much power to a governor, to a local government chairman, and even to a president. You see, when you look at it all over the world, it is in Nigeria that, you, that they have the most powerful governors, the most powerful presidents in the whole world. And when you look at this again, you now begin to ask yourself, do we have a constitution in Nigeria? If yes, then why is it that it is difficult for those that swore to uphold the Nigerian constitution are the ones that are even going against the Nigerian constitution. In the first place, what Agba Jalingo, Agba Jalingo must have said anything, could have said anything. He has a fundamental right to say so. Now, if he have said it against me, Smart Uluwole Agba Joye, and I felt, maybe in his, in his online publication, and I felt, look, this is liberious. I will tell my lawyer, I will say, what Agba Jalingo has accused me of, I have not done it. Now, write him and ask him to please react to your, your petition. Failing to do this within a specific time, a speculated time, then go to court. 
Let the court take its course. But where you would ask somebody, you will ask the police in um, Cross River to, to come to Lagos and arrest somebody. And they will take that person through the, through the arrow of all the bad roads in a truck and take the person back there. And that is the end that they, that, that they will see of him. It's so sad. Now, I spent my Christmas in Calabar. While I was in Calabar, I, I took time off, mingled with the people, especially at what they call the Christmas village. I listened to some people. They said they are not happy with even the IAD himself as a governor. They seems to have to be in love with their first governor, uh, who, who is uh, 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 Donald, uh, what's it Donald called? Duke. Donald, Donald Duke. Duke. Sort of, they probably see a moke as even a bit better. A bit, a bit, uh, a bit, um, okay, but let them even accept him that Donald Duke is still the best. Today, what an average person in Calabar will tell you is that Donald Duke is the best governor they've had. Now, when I met Ayade during the, uh, the, the, the Calabar festival, it's a different thing from what people said about him. I see, as a, I see a governor that is trying to be close to the people, and yet the people are very far from him. So that is a problem. Okay. Now, you're trying to say the people are not accepting of so, Governor Ayade. Now, yes. Mean, yes, because, and again, you see, let me tell you, if you do things according to the law, you will always win. That is the simple truth. If what uh, Agba Jalingo have said against the government, against Ayade, they are false, all you just need to do is to look. We have what we call, we have inflow of every cash that belongs to the state comes into an account, either from the federal allocation, from uh, non-oil, whatever, the 13% derivation, or from the internally generated revenue. Just say, please, Mr. Agbajalingo, can you prove where this money was okay, moved now, from? Okay, that, that brings me to the question I was, I was going to ask. Now, Najib, I mean, prior to these allegations by Agbajalingo, and even now in his, in his incarceration, has there been any investigation into his claims and his allegation on the Crossroads state government as it is. Mm. You know, I am happy that um, the governor has created this situation. Although I'm not happy Agba Jalingo is in prison for yeah. no, doing virtually nothing wrong. But then the situation has now, it has now created a, a means of exposing what is happening in Cross River. I've, I've not been in Cross River before is I this don't just have people cross, is this just cross river all the yes, no, criminal justice this, system no, as, for this as a specific people. no for this specific okay. issue i'm talking about the case of 500 million no. naira that's supposed to go into a bank yes. this is not the first time it's happening in uh, Kwara state it happened during the time of uh, um, this man saraki where he took a portion of Kwara money and he was putting it into a company a petroleum company that just disappeared up to today it's only the DSS that call, they call him once in a while, and when he bends, they... But then, these kind of issues, they just disappear. But I'm happy that noise is being made, and people outside of Cross River State are beginning to know that there's a microfinance bank somewhere that state money worth about 500 million has been put in, and the money has disappeared. So whether this issue of Agba Jalingo, whether they eventually free him as soon as possible or they don't free him, people will continue to ask about that money. And perhaps what has happened to former Abia state governors will still come to visit this current governor of Cross River. Okay. If he had maybe said, oh, uh, Mr. Jalingo, this question you raised, look at where we, how we put the money in and look at how we disbursed it to micro businesses in Cross River, it would have been an issue that would have died out a long time ago. But with this, he's beginning to expose more and more. More and more people are beginning to, even internationally, like he mentioned, they are beginning to know that there is a case of someone being illegally um, incarcerated, and it is because he exposed some shady things about yes. state money. Yes. Another thing I want to raise is, um, as a journalist, most likely a member of the Nigerian Union of Journalism or something and i've not seen i've not seen much of their actions in fact i do see them sometimes go and wine and dine with governor that's you talking about the nigerian you know, journalists in journalists. Crush River. Yes, yes yes even nationally i've seen their members during the calabar carnival they're all taking lovely pictures smiling happily with him and i wonder at what point do they say mr governor where is our colleague you must release him now 
I don't understand. So that is my, I think the people who have failed the most, who have failed Agbajalingo the most, are the I Nigerian journalists I, I and well, his the, union. The, the, um, the union his chairman union of, of that region has come out to say he has been doing something on the ground that no, he doesn't have to come out. That, out thing. Thing. that he doesn't have to come thing. out the way many people are coming out to speak about. He has to come out very strongly. Very strongly. It's not an underground issue. Now, this, it, this is it for me. Let me interject. Yes, you. please. Let me tell you. In the first place, uh, to take you where you stopped, you said he said he has been doing something on the ground. Yes, you cannot do something on the ground. <laughs> you see, this is why I've been so careful as a member of the civil society. Those days, as a member of the civil society, if we are with Ganefa or Amy, he will say, okay, this group, this is your leader. You are in charge of this. You are in charge of that. And he will say, if you are not satisfied with what this person has said, please report back to me. You see... Bekora Kuti, we have people that take responsibility. But right now, maybe because of poverty, maybe because people even refuse to even see that they can even grow beyond that professional circle which they are. You see, they want to take any stipend and perhaps um, become a stooge. For goodness sake, the Nigerian Union of Journalists as a whole, the Nigerian Union of Journalists as a whole, have not protected the arts very well. If, the, if not, if, look, not just all, in this case, in several case, cases of journalists in North Africa. They could have even shut down any information concerning Cross River States. They should have even taken it up upon themselves. They should have taken it up with Mr. President. They, would have, they should have taken it up with, with In the first place, now, now we are saying, Ayade, I listen to Ayade clearly. I'm sure if your studio have it, maybe they should play it. Yes. Where he said, he said, Agba Jalingo, I have been his most. Uh, 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 benefactor. Okay, just just hold up there. We're going to play that. We're going to play that video. Yeah. Let's let's take a look at this video, and then we will come back to to more talk and plus politics. He on his own Facebook page, he posted an ambitious program. As please don't get it wrong, Agba Jalingo is not from Cross River alone. He is not from Obudu, where I come from alone. He's my brother. On his own Facebook page. He sent pictures where he was being tear gassed in the revolution march in Lagos. Your own pictures posted by yourself. And when Soare was arrested, the same man went back on his Facebook to post that the revolution had just begun. We will continue this battle until revolution works. In court, he admitted. He is in court, federal government versus Akba Jalingo. Not cross river state. The same Akba Jalingo who is in jail, I sent him money. I called my chief press secretary and the rest. I said, look, the journalists will never understand that Akba Jalingo is the chairman, is the state chairman of Suarez's party. From the time he took, moved into politics, he became a politician. So you are seeing him as a journalist. No, but he is the chairman of uh, Suarez's party in, a, in, in Cross River State. So he is a politician. He has a primary calling, which is journalism. Please ask Akba Jalingo, that cross river watch, the first person to give him money to set up the office is myself. The vehicle, the official vehicle, is myself. And I don't want to list all of those. He knows that I have funded him and I've supported him. But journalism stops when blackmail becomes part of your strategy. Today you need something. I hear he's a good man. You write all the good things. But if I was to take my phone and show you our WhatsApp communication, you will tell me I am a man sent from God. Because when a man stretches you to the limit, today I need money to set up a computer school. Tomorrow I need money to feed my bed. Tomorrow I need this. Tomorrow I need, a, I need to be the sole distributor for Cross River State in Innocent Motors. He must buy this quantity of goods from me for me to get a certificate. I do that. So when you don't get... I have supported him I have funded him, and journalism stops where blackmail begins. Yes. This, this are claims Governor mm -hmm. is making. Exactly. Now, Agba Jalingo. You see, you see, the thing is, the governor is now beginning to say what his real personal beef is with Agba Jalingo. He has personal issues with him. They've been buddies. They set up a, a news agency together. He's been helping the man. And maybe at some point he gets to a point where he says, oh, I've done enough. That is his claim anyway. That is, no, we cannot say that is what actually happened. Yeah. But when such a thing happens, 
you accuse him or you tell the police that this man is trying to blackmail me. He's, collected, he's trying to collect money from me and I don't have any more money to give him and he wants to publish false information about me. Yeah. You know, that is what you should be charging him with, not terrorism, not cybercrime, not some kind of, um, there, there are some other, you know, grand treason. They're also charging him for treason. You know, and stop claiming that it's the federal government that is doing this. Come out with your chest and say, I have personal issues. A governor can sue a citizen, a citizen on a personal charge. It doesn't mean that because you are a governor, you have to say, oh, it's, it's Agba Jalingo versus the state, yes. or Agba Jalingo versus the, um, the federal government. You can take up the issue of blackmail and, you know, prosecute him. Okay. But all this um, illegal incarceration, 170 days in jail for no good reason, it doesn't make sense at all. Smart, going by the video we just watched, it's 172 days incarceration um, I, um, Agba Jalingo has been in. From the governor's comment, do you sense more? Is it more of a personal vendetta than more of actually um, the trial for the charges brought against um, Jalingo? You see, the governor, even though he's a professor, is not very smart. Why I say he's not very smart is because, you see, you cannot probate and also be reprobating. He said it clearly that if you had gone further in that video, because I have it, he said Agba Jalingo is not being prosecuted by him by the Cross River State Government, that it was a case, the same case the federal government was prosecuting Shewere and Bakari, or uh, the same case, that is why they are prosecuting him. Yeah. But, in the, but again, the police came to arrest Agbajaningo from Cross River State. Again, if, you're not, if now the state now is now taking over the case, at what point have, you, have, the, have the federal government now withdrawn their suits against Agba Jalingo, as that case that, the, that Agba Jalingo was standing before the courts, has it been quenched and now he's taking up a new charges? You see, he makes it up. That means he's not even smart. Mm, I, I think I the think, governor is, is confused. The, mm, look, he's I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to use that word. No, he's confused sometimes. I don't want to sometimes use that word. Sometimes when he's even saying things, he now starts, to try, starts trying to backtrack because he has mixed up a lot contradictory of contradictory statements. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in the first place, I think, like I've said, I am disappointed at the Nigerian Union of Journalists. I too. Yeah? Either the Cross River State section and even the national body, the National Guild of Editors or whatever, look, I am disappointed. Even the Nigerian Labor Union, I am disappointed. That is why sometimes if the Nigerian, I don't take the Nigerian Labor Union serious. The only time you see them make noise is when it concerns salary. There are so many things that they should be engaging the government of that is apart from salary. Mm. But I engaged one of them at, at uh, Sheraton Hotel in Abuja. He said, Mr. Smart, you are saying this. He said, we are not, he said, the NLC is not a pressure group that we are for, the, for, we are for, Niger, we are for Nigerian uh, uh, workers. He said, we are not a pressure group. Blah, blah. He said this thing. Danger Yakub, I remember. And I look at him, I look at Danger. I just walked out of him. Not because it is wrong. You see, these are the things that the NUJ, uh, Abia, Nigerian Labour Congress, is supposed to even take up. You see, what they don't know is that, look, what goes around comes around. It is like by Jalingo today. It could be, it could be, it could, it could, it could be, it could be, it could be Isare tomorrow. It could be anybody tomorrow. They're not looking at it from the angle where they are supposed to see that this is not an issue that concerns Agba Jalingo. Look, I'm not bothered if Agba Jalingo is arrested or whatever. I'm not even, from what you have said, I'm not saying Agba Jalingo can be trusted or whatever. But I'm not saying I'm vouching for Agba Jalingo, either most of those allegations. Let him come out and say. And you see, the good thing of these days is now, he said he had it on his WhatsApp. If you have it yeah, on your chat between a chat, a chat. Yeah. If you have those chats between you and Agba Jalingo, make it available to the police. Number one. Number two, if you have been transferring him money, if you have been giving him money to support him, and it's now black, and it's now coming back again to fire you, because you feed me does not mean if you are wrong that I should not that, that I should not talk. You understand? Because you feed me does not mean that if you are if you are wrong, I should not. I will not but if it is now blackmail, you have a right to go to the court, mm. and the same right that an ordinary citizen have. Is the same right that you as a governor have. Why must you use the state apparatus to suppress somebody? It is wrong. All right, Nana Jib, twice, Ajak Jalingo has been denied bail twice. Mm -hmm. All right, there are concerns that um, the trial that might fall short of international standards of fairness, and especially because the court oh. has allowed witnesses to be maxed and a mm -hmm. trial to be held in secret. 
what, what, what is this about? A lot has been going on, and it's not just for Agbajalingo's case. Uh, in terms of fairness in our justice system, there has been a lot of uh, concern that judges are being are being bent, you know, bent against what they are supposed to do by the government. And I see this as a case, but he's, he's appearing before a new judge later this week, right? So yes. let's hope there will be some difference in what we are going to see. But so far, the trial that has gone on so far has just been too shady for us to, 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 to call a real trial. But going forward, we expect better. All right. I'm smart. I'm going to ask you this. The trial of Agba Jalingo, what, what does this expose about um, the freedom of press and our, our criminal justice system? First, it has exposed our lack of upholding to the tenets of Nigerian constitution, upholding to the, uh, to the to rule and, to, to rule of law. Also, it has also shown that it is he who dictates the pipe that uh, it is he who pays, pays the, the piper, piper that dictates the tune. Mm. That it is so sad. And again, a judge was even telling EFCC sometime I think sometime during the week. He said, for goodness' sake. You must obey court order and not order from the above. Not order from the above. You see, I foresee anarchy, which I don't pray for. You understand? Because if I have time, I would have sang one uh, one song by Barista would be uh, Beleza uh, Secular in the Barista. He said, "Look, he who starts it might not end it, eh? And he who even comes in between might not even be able to even coordinate it." You understand? If anarchy starts, it becomes a free for all, which I don't pray for. That's why I've always believed in rule of law. Let us obey the rule of law, and people will sit right. If I have said something against you, and you have evidence that I've said it was against you, they were forced. Go to the court. Um, this guy did it now. What is he called now? What is this guy called? The former governor of Edo State. Um, this uh, this labor man. That is Oshomole. 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 Somebody showed Oshomole picture and a lady. In, a, in an uncompromising manner. And he said, this is not true. This is not me. He asked, they, they wrote them, and those people bragged. They went to court, it took time, and the court gave a judgment that this was not him. And they gave a judgment that they should pay him almost about 250 million. But you even look at it, if, we, if they sell the, all of it, the, the entire family of the, this, this publishing house, they cannot even have it. Okay. But what did they do? They went and begged, and they settled the case. The case went down. So let us always obey rule of law. Let us follow the rule of law and we'll be good. You see, and if you look at the major breaker of the, of the law in this country, they are the lawmakers. Mm. Now, Najib, Abba Ab Jalingo is, is in court for treason, as, as alleged. I'm just wondering, does the state have the power to, to try anyone for treason? Isn't that the prerogative of the, of the federal government? Uh, well, there is still a confusion about, like you heard the governor claim yeah. that it's a federal case. Yes. He said that and tomorrow again, he will say, oh, it's a state case. So there's some confusion about that. But I guess, uh, first and foremost, whatever the governor is accusing Agba Jalingo from what he has said in that video, there is no case of treason. There is no case of uh, terrorism, you know. So whatever they are charging him to, maybe they need to, as, they are, as the case appears bef before this new judge, maybe they need to even review the charges that they are putting forward because it's not treason mm -hmm. for me to say, oh, please clarify how you put our 500 million naira in microfinance bank. It's not treason. So that's what I just want to clarify. I just want to say. The state can even put its money in a microfinance bank. Yes, there's nothing probably wrong to, probably with to it. Boost, probably to boost. And that's why I exactly. Probably to trial. Probably to, probably to, probably to trial. Boost, micro, and after this probably to, probably incarceration, to have mm -hmm. they investigated the allegations? allegations? They've not said anything. See, I don't know. Sometimes they call somebody a professor. Sometimes you begin to even wonder what makes him a I professor. Honestly, because, <laughs> he, because if I were him, if, if, I, if I were him, if even fraudulently I have put the 500 million in the microfinance bank, what I could have just quickly said is that I would tell all my party members, look, SME, organize them, each ward, oh yeah, go to start applying for loan. And this microfinance bank, the, federal, the state government have set aside 500 million, and the only thing you can get, and before you know, even an illegality will become legal, and they will be able to back it up. You understand? So there is nothing wrong in a state putting 
money in the microfinance bank. Micro if it is to bank. if it is to boost the SME, which is also the which is the pivot of any of any economy. You understand? There's nothing wrong in what they have done, provided it is not fraudulently, provided you have not put that money there to be siphoned. If they you see, oh. Oh, it's smart, Akwejori and Najib Bello. Thank you very much for your contributions. Thanks, Ben. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Nigerian soldiers have been blamed for the activities of Boko Haram terrorists. Do stay with us.